Um, good afternoon. It's Sunday and it's um, Black Bright. Recording from the east of England, around the world. This video is mostly for people in England, I think. So, but anybody's welcome to listen. If you like my videos, please put the thumbs up, the thumbs down if you don't like them. You can subscribe, you can share and you can comment. Today I wanted to make the instructions for the lockdown scheduled for the 5th of November a bit more clearer. The reason why I say I want to make it a bit more clearer, because I was a bit confused this morning and I needed to have something clarified and therefore I think if I'm confused, therefore other people are going to be confused. So this is for those who may be confused, not for those who are not confused. Okay, and I hope I don't confuse you even more. But basically, the, um, the objective is between the 5th of November and the 2nd of December, it is to reduce day-to-day -day contact with other people. That is the main objective. And to do this, they are requesting people to stay at home except for specific purposes. Now, specific purposes is relative. What might be specific to one person might not be specific to another, but the rule of thumb for specific means you're going out to do a specific thing. It doesn't mean you're loitering or you're waiting for someone or you're hanging around at a bus stop, you're meeting your mates. That They do not consider that specific. You have to be, um, say, OK, I'm going to a public place to buy X, Y, Z. You go to that public place to buy X, Y, Z, and then you come home. That's what they mean by Pacific. And the, of course, those are the essential um, places where you can go like for shopping and stuff like that. So um, so when you have to have a purpose, you do, you do what you need to do and then you go back home. That is what they mean by Pacific or my interpretation of what they mean. All of this about, about what I'm talking about is just my opinion. OK, it's not fact. I like to put that out there just in case people think, you know, a voice from the gods or something. I'm not. OK, but there is there does seem to be a contradiction because they're saying preventing gathering with people you do not live with. Except for specific purposes. Now, that seems to contradict you know, going out and only going to specific places. But I'm going to get there in the end. I had it in my head this morning. OK, so preventing gathering with people you do not live with except for specific purposes. Now, those specific purposes, as I mentioned, would be if you need to go to the shop and get your essential items, you do that and you come back. So you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to go to work. You're allowed to go to school, college, university. You're about allowed to go to the supermarket to do your shopping. You're allowed to go to the GP surgery. You're allowed to go to the job centre. You're allowed to go to any civil um, registry. You're allowed to go to court. You're allowed to exercise. You're allowed outside in a public place which and visit your support bubble. Now, you're probably saying... So if you're allowed to do all of that, what is the point? Yeah. The point is, is that if you only essential workplaces are going to be open anyway. And those essential workplaces are those that keep the country running. That's what they consider essential workplaces. In those in those essential workplaces, they should be observing the COVID-19 safety rules. So therefore, the hands, the face, the space. So that is why they're saying that you should be able to go to work because they're deeming it an essential job that you need to go to. That is why it's going to be open. And like the work, similar with the school, similar with the university, when you're buying food, now you're going into the shop, you know you have to operate strict regime, going in one way, out the other, wearing the mask, all of that is COVID-19 friendly. So that is why you, they say 
you can go to these places because these kind of places are controlled and they have to obey specific laws. Um, so then you might say, OK, going to the job centre, well, I assume they would also be obeying the restrictive, you know, the two metres. Outside for exercise, that is you, those in your immediate family or your support bubble. And outside in a public place, once again, if you're in a public place, they don't just mean any public place. You're there for a specific purpose and you're in your following the social distance rules and regulations, the masks, the distance. That's why they say a public space, because technically you're supposed to have enough space to keep the two metres. That is their logic behind it or my understanding of their logic behind it. OK, so basically what they've done is they're allowing the um, businesses to run that meet our basic needs, not our wants, but our basic needs. So food, education, exercise. OK, so that's that bit. So what the government determines as non-essential businesses will close effective 5th of November. Relevant authorities and police will have powers to enforce the law on the 5th of November. And you might say, so how are they going to know if I do this? How are they going to know if I go there? How are they going to know who I have in my house? Remember, you've got some resentful people at home. Those resentful snitches and grasses and snoopers, those people are looking out their windows just waiting for you to make a mistake so they can report you to the police. You don't have to worry about the police. You've got people who are policing you, the community police, and they are more dangerous because they'll be probably taking photographs of you. They're probably telling the people the time. They'll be taking photographs of people coming into your house, leaving your house and all sorts. So those are the people you need to be wary of, especially if you're in a neighbourhood where you do not know everyone. You're not in a close knit neighbourhood where you're friends with everyone. So that's how they will know for the most part. I think things like drones and all that kind of stuff will come in afterwards. But now they're relying on community policing. And you've got a lot of people who are sitting at home who are angry, who are resentful, who want something to do. They feel as though they're volunteering. They're doing good for the community. So they're eager to report anybody who violates these rules or who are seen to violate the rules. OK, so um, you might ask, why are people allowed to shop? Oh, sorry, I've, just, I've done all of that. So um, focused on specific reasons for leaving home means the time spent outside your home should be minimal. Yes. Yeah, so if you're going out for a focused and specific reason, that means you go, you do that, come back. That means the time spent outside your house should be minimal. You must not meet socially indoors with family and friends. But there we're coming up to winter. So who's going to want to meet outside? That's another thing. They're keeping playgrounds open. What's the point of keeping playgrounds open in the winter? They're going to be freezing the poor kids. So anyway, so, but you can meet what? Well, I'll, I'll get to that bit. I don't want to kind of override and then I forget things. OK, support bubbles. That's another question. You might wonder, how are authorities going to know who my support bubble is? Well, the, sort, the authorities ain't silly. Number one, you've all been requested to download the COVID-19 Track and Trace app. Now, that is supposed to make sure that wherever you go, you can track and trace now who's in the vicinity, who has um, the virus. Now, you might be saying, oh, I'm going to leave my phone at home. I'm not going to switch my phone on. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to put my Bluetooth on. They're not going to be able to track and trace me. Now, that is fine if you have your family and you're already in your bubble. But if you live alone and your bubble is outside and you need to go and visit your bubble or somebody or somebody in a care home that you care about or your child who your child, if you're a single parent and your child is in a different area and you want to go and see that child. 
you're going to need to have your track and trace on because they'll be looking for consistency. And if they happen to stop you and they say, oh, where are you going? And you say, oh, well, I'm going to see my girlfriend. She's my support bubble. And how long have you been seeing her then? OK, X amount of times. OK, well, show me on your track and trace that she is your um, support bubble and we'll let you go along your way. Now, if you can't show that your track and trace has been on, so you've been trying to protect yourself as a dutiful citizen, they can say to you, oh, well, I'm sorry, we have no evidence of her being your bubble or him being your bubble. So therefore, we're not allowing you to make this trip. So it's a kind of a backdoor way of getting you to use your track and trace. Just my opinion. If they're not going to say to us, you can have a support bubble and not have a way to monitor it. The government doesn't work like that. Anything the government asks you to do, they've got something into place to monitor it. So the track and trace will also not only monitor whether who you've been circulating with and where you've been. If you want to go and see your support bubble or if you want to go and see your child, you need to have a consistent track record of going to that those two specific addresses. Otherwise, you won't be able to see them because they've got no proof. You could be saying, oh, I'm going to go here. You could you say you're going to go there. You could say you're going everywhere. And everywhere you go, oh, that's my support bubble. You go and see a door. Oh, that's my support bubble. It's not going to, the government ain't stupid. So that's just my way of thinking how they're going to track people and their support bubbles. I could be wrong. They might, they might have another strategy that hasn't got into my little brain cells yet. But that's the way I, I think that they're going to be able to monitor who's in which support bubble. And do you notice any time, well, this one we've got, we've got four days to sort your things out. So you better sort out whatever it is you need to sort out in four days. Including download the app if you need to go and see someone regularly. The thing is, is that you can hide from this app. But to be honest, it's going to bite you in the bum in the end anyway. That's the way I see it. It's going to bite you in the bum. It's going to get you one way or the other. So, um, and Bluetooth needs to be on. <laughs> I get this little message on my phone because I don't see no point in you putting my Bluetooth on and running down the battery when I'm at home. So I don't put my Bluetooth on, but you can guarantee I get this little message that says um, virus, um, your Bluetooth is on and you can't get to check. So I, I don't even know what it, I can't remember the exact wording, but it's more or less saying that they're unable to check where I am because my Bluetooth isn't on. But if I'm not going anywhere, I don't see no point in putting it on. And I don't think they're asking you to put it on 24-7, or are they? I don't know. I haven't seen the rules and regulations about that. Anyway, a support bubble, specifically for those who live alone, by choice or otherwise, allows one bubble, family or individual, to visit you or visit them. And of course, the bubbles must agree who is the bubble. You can't just, like, I couldn't, okay, I'd go and see my fella, he's in a bubble. And then my, I could say, oh, my daughter's in another bubble. I would have to agree with my partner whether I'm in his bubble or whether his son is in his bubble. But I think you're allowed what we, we you are allowed one other. So I could be one bubble and his son could be another bubble. Um, yeah, but and with your bubble, you can stay overnight and visit public places together. The only exception is where divorce separated parents, children visit. Visitation will be allowed. Once again, track and trace will be proving consistency in your travel. The one thing I thought was interesting is that it does say a support bubble, specifically for those who live alone by choice or otherwise, allows one bubble, family or individual to visit you or you visit them. So it's not both. You can't have a bubble and an individual to visit you. It's 
one or the other. That or is very significant. Details. So, um, so my daughter, who lives in Luton, which is high risk, I live in central Bedford, which is medium risk. It does mean we can meet outside the house, even though she's not in my bubble under tier two. As long as we socially distance, we can exercise together. And, you know, you wear your masks and stuff. So that is an example of a tier two um, meeting of family or friends. You can exercise or visit outdoor public places with people you live with, your support bubble or one person from another household. So my daughter would come under the category of a person from another household. The key word we need to pay attention to is, like I said, all. Does it mean all one of these groups? Are these groups interchangeable or is it on an event by event basis? Because what I'm wondering is, is that you can exercise or, vi or visit outdoor public places with people you live with. That or, it implies you can either do one or the other. You can either exercise or you can visit an outdoor public place. Otherwise, they would, they would have said you can exercise and visit outdoor public places with people you live with. Now, when they're saying um, people you live with, your support bubble or one person from another household, they're not saying people you live with, your support bubble and one person from another household. So that little or is really significant. If, if you are, if you get stopped by the police and you're not clear whether it's an or or an and. But the or is quite clear to me that it's either one or the other. And this is as of Thursday. So they need to let us know whether it's interchangeable or whether it's just you can see somebody in your support bubble on one occasion and then you can see a person from another household on another occasion. I said I was going to make it simple, but I think I've complicated it myself, to be honest. But that or means something. So all non-essential retail, leisure facilities and entertainment and personal care facilities are going to be closed. It's like back to shopping online, but you can't do your hair, like, hair online, can you? So um, buy wigs. Good advert. Yeah, that's what you'll have to do. If your hair's looking all messed up, buy some wigs. They're getting cheaper and cheaper, actually. Shouldn't cost you more than 30, 40 quid. I mean, if you want to be exotic and go Remy or Brazilian and have your hair down your back, you're looking at about 150. But the regular, you know, day by day wigs, you can get one for about 40 quid. You can even get them for 15 quid and 10 quid on Amazon. Don't know what they're going to look like, but you can get them. Anyway. The only thing with um, when you're buying online, especially once this high alert is out, it makes it very difficult to return uh, to return because of cross contamination with the items. People aren't going to want you to return them because they can claim, oh, well, we don't know if you've got coronavirus. So we are not obliged to have your items returned. So if you are going to buy online, make sure you um, buy from a reputable um company and somebody and a brand that you've used before so you know exactly what it's going to look like you, there's no surprises reliable brand reliable source um funerals 30 people still ash scattering 15 people no weddings so if you didn't get married in this little break that we had there's no weddings for you no civil ceremonies 
but they do say un except in exceptional circumstances. I guess an exceptional circumstance would be if you're dying terminally ill and your last request is to get married. Maybe they might consider that an exceptional circumstance, but not your willy nilly reason for getting married. So no weddings. And um, what they consider essential work, otherwise you should be working from home, is any um, job or work that keeps the com country operating and supporting vital sectors and employers, including education. Um, and you're allowed, of course, to travel to work to those kind of establishments. Clinically vulnerable. In terms of this lockdown, over 60s must reduce contact with others regardless of medical condition. Um, but then, I don't know if they're still doing this, they were asking retirees to, to help out when, you know, they, you know, because of the coronavirus. I don't know if they're still doing that. So that's a kind of a contradiction if that still applies. It might not apply now. Under 60s with underlying health conditions reduce contact with others. Um, pregnant. Uh, reduce contact with others, and there are others, but that list is not exhaustive. I'm just not going to go through it. You must visit. Well, I'm going to actually put the link down in the description, gov.uk. So if you do visit relatives in a care home, exercise due care and diligence, travel, no overnight stays from primary residents, no non-essential travel by private or public transport can travel to the workplace, you can travel to an educational facility, you can travel to fulfil caring responsibilities, you can travel to the hospital, GP appointments, but you must reduce the number of journeys in all of these um, exceptions. I was just seeing if there was a contradiction in there, but I don't think there is. Workers in any part of the UK can retain their jobs even if the employer cannot afford to pay them. And they can be paid at least 80% of their salary and up to 2,500 per month. That, well, that stops on the 31st, which was yesterday. So what that was the coronavirus job retention scheme. What's going in now is the job support scheme. Um, employers will now be asked to pay national insurance and pension contributions for their staff during the month of November. But I don't think they have to pay them a salary. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. But anyway, I don't know if I've made it more complicated or simplified it. I hope I've simplified it. That's all for now. Bye bye.